recipient of the Hummingbird Medal Gold in 1990 for her outstanding contribution to culture. Graduate of the University of Toronto, Bachelor of Arts degree in French, Spanish and Philosophy, Master of Arts in Medieval Studies, Diploma in Bilingual Secretarial Studies, Diploma in Education, Musical Director of the Outstanding Marionettes Chorale. The Lady Greta Taylor. Greta, welcome to Not For Women Only. My pleasure to be here, Richard. And Greta, where do we begin? There's so much to talk about. Let's begin with your professional life at St. Joseph's Convent. Well, many moons ago, I uh, joined the staff of St. Joseph's Convent in Port of Spain as a languages teacher. But as time went by, I got involved in many other uh, school activities. I taught mainly uh, French from forms one, from form one up to form six. I taught all the levels and I also did Spanish. And general people as well. And general people, uh -huh. right. And in, in recent years, I also did music. In the last couple of years, just before I retired, I taught music to the Form 1s. Yeah. But Greta, high point of your involvement at uh, St. Joseph's Convent was your contribution in the musical arena. And in fact, your choir won the Seagut Cup for the best secondary school choir and the Prime Minister's Trophy for the most outstanding junior choir of the festival. What yes. did that involve? Well, um, it involved a lot of very hard work discipline, commitment, dedication, sacrifice, because uh, you have to motivate the children to re recognizing the fact that nothing comes easy. And that to attain high standards, it means that you have to stretch yourself. You have to strive, sometimes it's painful in the process. And that uh, if it looks easy at the end, it's because all the work has been put in for over a period of time. And of course, you also combined with St. Mary's College and you all won the Rally Cup yes. for the best mix, mix yes. choir that was in 1978. Yes, and um, we, we won the Rally Cup together. Uh, and as a result of that... Combined the um, direction of Greta Taylor and Lindian, Lindian. Borden Ridge. Yes. Uh, as a result of that, we done very well in the music festival in 1978. And we were nominated by the late Marjorie Padmore to represent uh, Trinidad at an international youth music festival in Vienna. And I would say that was one of the more high points of my musical career, which incidentally is extracurricular. But in many respects, it involved more emotional and physical energy than teaching what I was there to do. Well, and it's because you, you had the talent, Greta, and that is how it became possible. Well, I suppose um, a certain amount of that had to be there. And um, I would say yes. If I were a school child, that would, would have been the, the high point of my school life. As far as the teachers are concerned and the chaperones, it was a lot of hard work. It was very strenuous. And, and we have a privilege this afternoon. We're going to get just an excerpt of the St. Joseph's Convent Choir.
what we saw was the 1984 choir of St. Joseph's Convent, and of course, we had shades of the brilliance of Greta Taylor, uh, the Greta Taylor who was a consistent winner in the Biennial Music Festival. And in fact, Greta, you played solo duet and duet for two pianos. Well, I think I retired from the, the solo scene quite early, recognizing uh, my limitations in terms of no how, how absent, and talent. How absolutely humble. No. <laughs> And then I decided, well, there, you, that was torture, doing a, a solo. And, that, and in fact, it's very taxing and the business yes. about it. Yeah, you feel totally abandoned when you're on the stage alone. This is not to discourage youngsters coming up because obviously they have a lot more nerve than I had. But I got a lot of, of fun playing with, with Susan Dorr. At that time, she was Susan David, playing piano duets and duo piano. The difference, of course, being that uh, for duo piano work, you had you each had a piano. Um, so there was, it was two piano work then. And, um, and that you really enjoyed? Yes, I did. So that um, the, the, the strain and the, the stress of competing seemed to be dispelled a little bit or dissipated a bit by, you know, the, the enjoyment we got out of it in, in those years. And of years. course you won the Trinidad Guardian Cup several yes. times over. Yes. And the Nora Grant Trophy, let's talk a little bit about the leader class. Yes, well that was introduced, I believe it was in 1970 for the first time and uh, and you were the very first winner of that class with yes. Bernadette Lachlan Scott yes because uh -huh. the accompanist was judged as well as the singer so um, the winner was on both performances did you enjoy the leader class Greta? yes well I, I, in, in those days I enjoyed any novelty or any challenge of that nature yes I enjoyed preparing and Bernadette was very conscientious and she, you know, made it, we motivated each other. Yeah. Yes, a singer, a tremendous emotion. I, anytime I, I, I recall, um, you know, Bernadette singing, it was always with a lot of feeling, you know, something. She left you feeling overwhelmed. Oh, yes, she threw herself into whatever oh, she yes, did. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Emotional performance. Greta, and the high point of your life, would you say the high point of your life is the marionettes chorale? Well, right now it's the most physical, the most visible part mm -hmm. of my mm -hmm. life, um, because I am very happy working behind the scenes. But uh, when I'm leading the marionettes, I have to be in front of them on a big stage, and um, yes, it, it occupies a lot of my creative time and energy you now. Let's talk about the marionettes chorale in 1980 in terms of their involvement in the biennial music festival where the Marionettes Chorale won the JCC Cup for the Most Outstanding Mixed Choir, the Lions Trophy for the Most Outstanding Choir of the Festival, the Ashdown Cup for the Choir Best Religious Music. Yes. Well, I must say, Richard, you have a much better memory than I have. Um, I don't think I could name those trophies off like that. Uh, we re-entered the Music Festival Arena after an absence of 12 years in 1980 simply because I have very ambivalent feelings about competition. But there were new members in the choir who wanted the experience of competing in the music festival as part of a choir. So we, we debated it for about six weeks and finally we gave in and we went back into the music festival and we did very well. Exceedingly well. And the choir went on to, to compete in an international festival where the choir actually was awarded, uh, uh, you know, given the, the award for the choir making the most outstanding contribution. Yes, uh -huh. um, that was in 1984, where we participated in the Cork International Folk and... Choral uh, sorry, and no, dance. Choral and Dance, dance Festival. Festival. Yes. And uh, we became our, came away with three prizes, and two second place prizes, and the, the first place for the visiting group, because it could have gone to a dance, as well, a uh, dance group Oh, as I well. see. Right. Uh, making the greatest contribution. Tell us about that experience a little bit more. How did the choir members respond to the international arena? Well, we left here um, sort of looking forward to meeting other people doing the same thing internationally and seeing what our standard was like against theirs. But we had some very trying moments before, you know. Oh, it was a totally a cappella, which means unaccompanied uh, festival. The pieces were extremely challenging. We had to make sure they were in tune, and that was not easy. I think many of us nearly got strokes tuning the choir and whatever. 
and the prizes we got were in the madrigal class and we were up against people who specialize in madrigal singing and of course that's not really that's fairly alien to our culture here and I simply told the choir we had to take 20 members it was a very that was the limit uh, to relax and have a good time because we didn't expect to do anything and of course do you we come away with ourselves. you know a wonderful feeling knowing that it has been an I mean a successful international experience I mean where you come up against choirs that are Oh yes. oh yes. Oh um, yes. It must be. It must be very fulfilling. Yes, and uh, it's it's sort of feeling that you can't really buy. And mm -hmm. I mean, you come home and you you it's your treasure because you can't really share it with anybody. But it's something that you keep for life. Greta people always, uh, you know, allude to the fact that possibly you're very well off as a result of your being involved with Marionette's Chorale and Dibs and musical direction. What's it, what's the truth about all of this? Well, um, I don't like destroying myths, but I have heard that said too, and it's actually quite amusing because um, I can't speak for the choral directors, but in Trinidad, I don't think that they are paid at all. I certainly have never been paid a cent for what I do, and I don't expect to be paid, and there are no members of the choir, whether they're executive or otherwise, no member gets paid. It is our it's, contribution to society, and we hope we are doing something. It's a wonderful contribution. Yeah. And, and it is our pleasure and privilege. We don't really expect And let's go to tape and enjoy some of what the marionette has to offer.
a big 25% discount sale. And Greta, I'd like to congratulate you on the choral excellence that you have achieved. Well, thank you Many, very much. many hours, I'm sure, of hard work. This is, um... How different is it from, you know, dealing with the youngsters, dealing with the adults? Well, um, you'll find that, at least from my experience, that it's the same sort of thing, you know, that you, you, pull, you pull up both groups, uh, sorry to sound negative, for the same sort of thing. Um, with children, they usually respond uh, to any directive without being too offended that perhaps they're being belittled. So one always has to be cautious about how one corrects adults, especially in the case of Marinus, where there's so much sacrifice in terms of, of time. Um, yeah, because these are all family. working people yes. who are coming in after hours and leaving yes. family. So that they, yeah. the continuity and the stability depends largely on the goodwill of the members. But I think I'm very privileged or very lucky that at this stage, the members by and large show that they have, for, for better or for worse, um, a great deal of faith in what I do. And so that um, pulling up and correcting and that sort of thing has become easier because I think they understand what, what, I, what I'm striving for. But how do you arrive at repertoire? Well, it isn't easy because you have to think of so many things. Um, availability of music is one very major point because we don't really have the bookstores in Trinidad at the moment that uh, would offer a wide range of classical music. It means then that you go with what you have or what is recommended or, as I often have to do when I travel, I go around to the, the music shops um, and I look around, I look at catalogs, I buy tapes, I listen, I spend a lot of the year listening to tapes, trying to balance a program, and also very important, you have to think of what the, musical the choir taste. will respond to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what the audience, mm -hmm. because without the audience support, you don't really feel um, absolutely sure that everything you're doing is, is worthwhile. You need some sort of feedback. As a musical director, do you see it as part of your responsibility to educate the public as well? I know you, you are concerned with what they would like, but do you see the need to reflect on how can we educate them in terms of extending the gamut in terms of their musical taste? Well, simply by, um, well, we all feel very confident or very comfortable with what we're familiar with. And that is also a difficulty when you're programming because you have to choose uh, a piece of music that is different, but which will not be too drastic a change from what people are used to. I found that in my early years that people were the, the, the response to something that was totally new was fairly negative. But I think we've overcome that now. And for example, at a concert, we'd always put in a piece that is different and that some find strange. But I think now the audience is prepared to sit back and listen because I think they feel that whatever we present might be well done. Hopefully that is And of course, Carmina Burana, what a, what a challenge that was. Yes, well, Richard, you should know me because you were part of that <laughs> stage. Part of, it, stage. part of it. Very vocally taxing. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, is a, it is a difficult work. It is not the most difficult work that we have done, though it sounds that way. Mm -hmm. um, its challenges are more with the sort of range that it, it, it demands and expects from the soloists and from the choir. The tessitura is very, very high, for example. But um, you'll find that a lot of the pieces are like verses and chorus, so that once you know the melody and the, the, the harmony for one verse, it's just only words for the other verse. Mm -hmm. Of course, the difficulty was that it was not in English. It was in old Latin and old German and old French. So the music had to, to tell the story because it was not easy to follow in terms of understanding the words. Greta, earlier in the program, you referred to having joined the staff so many years ago. Mm -hmm. No one would imagine that looking at Greta, of course, because Greta looks extremely well. Well, Richard, I, I just hope that you don't expect to be paid for that because I am only a poor pensioner right now. <laughs> uh, tell us about, imagine this woman, look at her, in retirement. She doesn't look the part, but she's functioning. What is retirement all about? Well, retirement doesn't mean that you 
you stay home in a corner or in a rocking chair and uh, or spend the day doing your nails and whatever. It simply means that you have changed direction. And I find that now I am very busy or as busy as I always was. But this tr- I, I find that I have more control over what I do. Yeah. And that, in a way, is less stressful. And of course, Greta, if you're teaching voice now, you were, in fact, vocal coach. I mean, apart from preparing the choir, you prepared soloists for the music, Bayern yeah. uh, Music Festival. And you had, I mean, tremendous success, winning the Jean Abdul Trophy for the most outstanding adult vocalist, winning the Mae Johnson Cup for the best, you know, awesome work. Uh, well, I don't consider myself a vocal coach as such because I, I think it's a very highly specialized area. Uh, what, my, what I seem to have um, the ability to do is to interpret styles and in a very basic way help people with their vocal production. Not at all basic. Not at all basic. Uh, I would say basic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have been exposed to many courses and workshops which tell you about these things and I have tried to absorb as much as I can but I would still never consider myself a specialist vocal coach. Yeah, but you're doing extremely well, and even this well, year been at the music festival, yeah. you've been having tremendous success. Oh, yeah. So congratulations on all of those. Whether in your retirement, is there any special dream? Because I know at one stage you used to paint. Yeah, I used to dabble, Richard. There's a big difference between dabbling and painting. Um, uh, because As of I the, say, the, she's very humble, this lady. Well. <laughs> The, the point is that my, the education system that I was part of did not really accommodate choice of subjects. You didn't really choose what you were good at, but you had to choose what was offered. I had to make the choice in, in, in Form 3 between Latin and art. So I have remained a, um, a frustrated artist or painter. And I would like to perhaps do a little more formal training, have a little more formal training in painting, because it's really something I like to do and before the arthritis and the rheumatism. And That's that a long thing. way off, Greta, oh, no. a long way off. Greta, about your mentors, who, who are they? Well, um, I would say the people who have helped me to achieve, first and foremost, my father, um, the late Dr. Alden Francis, who was a fine example. He was an all-rounder and he always told us that we had, whatever we attempted, we had to try and excel in it so that this is how I approach everything that I did. And I had a great deal of support from uh, people like Daphne Clifford. Of course, Daphne was wonderful to all of us. She made a tremendous contribution to our life. Yeah, especially what I did uh, in the choral field. And um, of course, if Susan and I were not so silly in the early years, that um, these duets that we uh, we are very so grateful well in, that you all made that decision. I better. don't think <laughs> that people would have been aware of the fact that I could even play the piano or know anything. So that and, and Suzanne, eh? Suzanne is very accomplished. I mean, she plays. Well, she's extremely with, talented, yeah. and I feel very comfortable having her accompany me at all times, um, whether it was the convent choir or marionettes, because we have an understanding. Uh, what we call certain amount and she's of empathy. Such a sensitive pianist. Yes. And I am very grateful to her for the sort of support she gives because her, her job, she's a, a bank manager with two young children and time is a problem, oh, but she be. makes the sacrifice and is always there when she's needed. Well, whenever she plays, it always sounds as if this is what she loves doing. Don't know what happens at the yeah. bank, but she certainly is a wonderful pianist. But well, I don't think she's aware of how, how good she is because very often she tells you up front, you know, I don't think I can handle that and she has to be encouraged. Yeah. And then it's the, the final result is fine, perfect. But the management of the entire choir, the Marinette's cor- Chorale, it's like a family business now yes. because Susan has been there, Joanne Mendez. Yes, and I would like to mention especially Joanne Mendez because she was a foundation member and she's quite, a, um, she's a stickler for high standards. She's an excellent organizer, excellent at PR, and I think without her, we certainly wouldn't be where we are today. Meticulous and personable. And tough. (laughs) She is very tough. Uh, Greta, I would like to continue chatting with you, but I know that Hazel wishes to come in because you are one of Hazel's favorite persons, and she, she must come in on this. She's not going to let this opportunity pass without joining us. Hazel, where are you, Hazel? Right on spot, uh, Richard. Uh, <laughs> right on spot. I was admiring Greta's very handsome living room. 
beautiful old-fashioned furniture, your paintings. Lady of great taste. You look lovely. <laughs> and so do you, oh, Hazel. <laughs> it's a case of perpetual evergreen, huh? They both. You know, you were talking, uh, we were following you on the monitor. You were saying something about being a frustrated painter? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But what an excellent um, likeness there to your daughter, Carolyn. Yes. Yes, um, when did you do that? Quite that a few years in, ago. Uh, yes, I think she was about three years old then. And she's always getting into everything, and that was a very typical shot. So I thought I, I wanted to capture it. That's so your only I child. Again. That's your only child, yes, only child. and uh, a lady with her own identity. Oh yes. You know, I really very wanted her here today with us. We are taping at a time, of course, when she's in school, and I know school is very important. I understand that Carolyn is a brilliant student. Well, she she's quite gifted, but uh, I don't think she's the best motivated person. But she's been doing very well. She's right? a happy child. Oh yeah. Musical. She writes poetry. Yes. But then again, you know, I always say this, Richard. You hear me on exactly. the subject all the time. The genes. Who are her parents? Exactly. Greta and Jeremy, Jeremy and Jeremy yeah. Taylor. The child has to be brilliant. The child has to be talented. You're yeah. doing something with Jeremy in the very near future. Yes, in yes. the near future, I'm going to be doing some of uh, a review of his work. Yes, but you know. Um, <laughs> The marionettes, we hear in this part of the world, in the Caribbean, and indeed internationally, that the marionettes chorale is held in high esteem because when we attend one of your concerts, Greta, I mean, we, we have come to expect a polished and professional performance. I mean, we are, we are very really hard and on I mean, the marionettes. And we associate <laughs> Christmas with the marionettes oh chorale. Christmas that's that's part of it. It begins the with the marionettes. You know. Early in December, we look forward to that. Uh, so, so concert. those are our expectations. What are your expectations from your audience? From your audience? Um, what? Um, I suppose patience, tolerance, and hopefully some very positive <laughs> feedback, you know, because regardless of, of what we put on, and I must say that whatever we do, we put 100% or more into it. And we hope oh, that shows. after Ooh. that, you know, people won't just come and criticize what you wear. And you always have like full that. houses, Greta. I mean, that's... Yes, and I would like, you know, right now to thank our um, supporters again, the, the audiences we've had. I mean, without them, we could really do nothing. Greta, could, Christmas nothing. 1994, when we all came through the rain, I was there with my new shoes. I never wear those shoes. I just put them there and admire them. And I was mm, in a puddle of water, but I said... The marionettes. Yes. Just I must hear all. this Just repertoire, yes. And you know, over the years, I've delighted in your entrances, as I, I call them, your entrances, uh, the way you stride on stage, your really? easy, <laughs> yes, your easy elegance. We see it all And better. yet, we I know you are, you are very shy, but, and I keep thinking, what is she thinking? Well, at, at times like that, I wish I could, you know, be miles away, you know, be myself elsewhere and come back at the end of the weekend. It, 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 you can't really judge a book by its cover because it's not as easy as that. It, with each concert, I have to kind of work myself up, psych myself to be able to do it because it's a terrifying experience just before you come on to stage. So you're a bright girl. You take absolutely nothing for, for, for granted. I don't think anybody should. You know, no, I agree with you. Well, that's how you achieve that's excellence. That's right. right? And it's the only way to stay on top. Go. You've mm. just got to work and work yeah. and work at it. But I'm, I'm, I've written something here. I'm going to refer to my notes. At a public forum on crime, I'm doing this without my glasses, Richard, the Prime Minister suggested, and I quote here, that exposure to classical and religious music might help curb criminal tendencies. What are your own thoughts? Well, I think he chose his words fairly wisely, and he said might, because um, there's a certain amount of truth in that. It's, very, it's a very difficult um, statement to respond to, because I know studies have been done uh, and pieces selected, which do have a very calming influence on, on, on people, and um, classical pieces, that is. But then people can argue that any type of music could produce some work which calms them. Music on the whole uh, can have that effect, but whether oh. only classical music or specifically classical music is debatable. Um, I am personally glad that I have had the exposure to classical music to the extent that I have, because I feel that it explores such a wide range, such, such a wide emotional range. Um, this is my personal feelings on it. But I think that it all depends on the individual and the circumstances and everything. And environment and that yes. sort of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, did you talk to Greta about her 
Listen to this word, retirement. <laughs> did you all talk it, about it, this at all? It sounds so absurd. <laughs> but did well, you discuss it at, at all? Yeah, we, yes. did, we did yes, talk about yes. it. We did but you're a about very it. busy she's lady. Very, she's very, very yes, active in yes. her retirement. In fact, oh, yeah. it's only a change of scenario, really. Exactly. <laughs> okay, a change of location now, because Bernard Beckles has prepared a few surprises for you. And uh, we are going to repair, madam, with your kind permission, to the living room. This is all in your honor. Okay. Well, I'm very happy to be allowed. We'll take a little break, though. Well. We'll take a little <laughs> break here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, all I can say is, Liz, that I, I don't recognize the place 
being the same case in that <laughs> oh, oh, it's no place, <laughs> You know, I mean, such talent is quite a transformation. So, all I could do is give him a nice kiss. Why not? <laughs> but it's lovely. Look at this. I it's told Bernard that yes, this is going to line. be your that favorite arrangement. Yes. Buy my house looks like a million dollars or all that. Well, I, I was telling him when I was making this one, I feel like a conductor. <laughs> conducting the flowers. <laughs> putting them together, just as you do with the marinettes to make the beautiful song come out, I try to put it with flowers. Oh, the, man the, the man is poetic, <laughs> you see. Well, Brenda, it is absolutely beautiful, and thanks so much. And here. thank and you for having me here. And you certainly will be back, and you must come again. Oh. <laughs> thank you for having us all here. Thank you for your warm hospitality. My love to your husband, Jeremy, and to your very dear, and my very dear, Carolyn. We are on location again next week under the direction of Mr. O'Neill Davies. A nice crew, don't you think? A hard-working oh, yes. crew. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You Thank Until you. next Sunday. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you Bernard. Thank you. It's a big one.